I'm Michael. And I'm Nick. And we represent Awesome Town. That's us. We're a small self-funded startup with no ties to any major publishers or developers. Our team is comprised of people with professional experience in and around the games industry who have gotten fed up with the struggle of trying to keep a job in a big bureaucratic corporate environment. So we decided to go independent so we could control our work and make the games that we would want to play. Which brings us to our first project, The Cookening. Now, Mike and I have been playing games for a long time. So we have a big soft spot for the classics from the 80s and 90s, especially early role-playing games and action-adventure games like The Legend of Zelda. Games which focus on a non-linear progression and require the player to find their way around the world rather than just leading them on a rigid, story-driven path. We also miss the days when games didn't take themselves so seriously. They would feature silly characters and fun environments. The Cookening is a tribute to the style of gameplay that we, and the games industry as a whole, grew up with. The Cookening features an open-ended world full of dungeons to explore and secrets to find, and has a large cast of humorous characters and tools. The story begins with our hero, a man we call Master Chef, sailing to a distant, mysterious, food-themed country to find a magic book of recipes called the Om Nom Namakon. However, the book is in the hands of his old arch-nemesis, Victor Von Doom, who is holed up in the depths of his exclusive restaurant dungeon. In order to gain access to Von Doom's lair, Chef must prove his worth by being awarded five stars by the ancient Culinary Council, granting him the prestige necessary to confront Von Doom and win the book. But getting the five stars won't be easy. Chef will need to earn the stars by finding tokens of courage located in dungeons scattered around the game world and bringing them back to the council. Finding the dungeons is up to you. And along the way, you will need to find tools and upgrades to give Chef the abilities necessary to deal with the trials before him. It's a pretty classically styled gameplay design, one that's been proven in numerous titles from the last several generations of gaming. But we've given it a bit of a twist. Food is a major theme of the game, and has influence on the visual and mechanical design of the game. For starters, your character is a chef, instead of your typical medieval fantasy hero or some big-haired anime character. And this is reflected in the weapons and tools you use. So instead of a sword and shield, you swing a rolling pin and deflect attacks with a cutting board. For your tools, you get items like a magic banana that returns to you when you throw it. Or tries to or a gun that launches potatoes. Your bombs are bottles of fizzy soda, a relay torch that can burn down obstacles. We're putting a fun little spin on all the kinds of tools you would expect to find in an adventure style game. But we're taking it a bit further than that. Since Chef is a chef, his cooking skills come into play. You can find ingredients and recipes in the world and take them to a kitchen to cook the items and use them as power-ups. The more ingredients and recipes you find, the more power-ups you'll get. The more stars you've earned, the more powerful the effects. And of course, the food theme is also represented in the environments and enemies you'll encounter. You'll fight bad guys, like the goblins and porks, who wield forks and knives and shish kebab skewers. You'll run into living gingerbread men, monsters made out of pudding, and meatball spiders with pasta noodle legs. And the world map itself is going to be pretty big. It's not just there to add time between dungeons. You'll also be able to find hidden upgrades and tools in the world map if you take the time to look for them. Overall, there's going to be close to a dozen tools, not counting the recipe power-ups, of which there should be another dozen or so. Plus, at least a good 30 enemy types across the world map and dungeons. So we've got a lot of content in the works. Our target goal is to release our game on PC in early 2013, around March or April, via digital distribution platforms like Steam and Desera. So that brings us to the point of this video. Why Kickstarter? You see, we're an independent studio. So that means we're not just making the game, we're also funding it ourselves out of our own pockets. We're doing all of the art, programming, and level design work that we can do ourselves. But we need to cover the costs of any other aspect that we need to outsource, like sound design. We've got a really great sound designer lined up. He's making a really great soundtrack and some awesome effects. So we're really excited about that. But that costs money. That's where you guys come in. See, we need some more money to finish this project with the standard of quality that we want. 
you guys are obviously looking for a fun action adventure game to play. Otherwise, you wouldn't be watching the video this long. So make a pledge to Kickstarter. Make our dream into a reality. That way, we're all happy. We get to make the game we want, and you get to play it. You can pledge as little as a dollar if you just want to help out. But if you want to make a larger pledge, you can get a copy of the game or other goodies. You can see a complete list of our rewards on our Kickstarter page. And if we get enough money, we can add even more content to the game, like extra dungeons or new enemy types, or be able to port our game to different platforms. We're not short on ideas for this game, so check out our stretch goals to see how your funding can have a direct impact on the cooking.